we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed our greatest need as Christians is the understanding of the word of God. We say understanding grips the soul. It is not just the cognitive knowledge of the word, but the understanding, the conviction that what you are reading is true and that it is for you and that it grabs your will to be able to act upon it. All that Jesus needed to do, he did it. And the verdict is enshrined in the word of God. Yes, so Christ let us read it to know what belongs to us. Yes, so it was very important that after the resurrection, when you realize that some of the disciples didn't understand what was written concerning him and what it means for him to resurrect from the dead, he opened their minds. So they will understand the scriptures. Luke 24 45. Luke 24 enum. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures so our greatest need brothers and sisters is the understanding of the scriptures that is why the apostle paul will always pray that his church the eyes of the standing of the congregation will be enlightened so they will know our greatest need brothers and sisters we said last week is not miracles not healing and deliverance our greatest need is not money it's not job not even heaven we will go there but once we are here heaven is not our greatest need our greatest need is the understanding of what is written concerning us we said that this brings liberation it says free. It says free. It says free. And when the apostle Paul was leaving Ephesus, he said he committed the congregation to God. And the word of his grace, which is able to build them up and to give them inheritance. So we said last week that two factors preserve our faith in Christ. He said God and his, the word of his grace. It is able to build us up and give us inheritance. Now this evening we will continue. So let's go back to Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts 20, verse 32. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Now I feel here, but the moment she already, I don't know now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace we said the other day that grace always accompanies the word 
When you are talking about grace, it came through Jesus Christ. So wherever the word or crisis, the grace is present. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. Which can build you up. He didn't say which will build you up. He says which can build you up. So we said that it has the potential to build us up and to give us inheritance. So it depends on you. It depends on you how you react towards the word of God. So look at the potential the word of God holds. It is able to build us up. It builds us holistically. Primarily, the word of God builds our spirit man. But it doesn't leave our soul and our bodies untouched. And so, this may sound a bit controversial in your ears. But I'll give my reason to back this position. Very soon. At least remember that Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds as of the mouth of the Lord. Now, I didn't say it. Jesus said it. So I'm saying that the word of God does not only build our spirit, man, it can touch your body, it can touch your soul. Because Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone. By, by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. So that have been logical to say bread for the body, the word for the spirit. But Jesus said, what bread can do to the body? The word of God can also do to the body. Okay. We'll throw some light on that in the course of this ministration. So it builds us up. And I'm saying that it builds us up holistically. And it gives us inheritance. When we are talking about inheritance here, inheritance means something that is or may be inherited. Anything that is and may be inherited. Property. Passing at the owner's death to the heir or those entitled to succeed. We are saying property. Not rags. Property. Passing at the owner's death to the heir or those entitled to succeed. So brothers and sisters, let me tell you that so far as the earth is concerned, Jesus is dead. He came to die. And so when we are talking about inheritance, it is passed on from the one who is dead to the heirs. And so once he died, whatever he has is ours. And we are heirs. Sometimes we just sing, we are as all of their father. You just sing, but you don't get the inheritance. Once you sing it, open your eyes and then collect the inheritance as well. And that's what we are talking about. Inheritance. We are talking about the genetic characters transmitted from parents to offsprings taken collectively 
something that is taken collectively. We are talking about genetic characters transmitted from parents to offspring. So inheritance is not just about property. It's about some characteristics. Yeah, can a Japadia and yet Japadia and say no more a try and waste your uncle. No more a Japadia and so bet me I a wusua a wufo at the Emma Woma. So we are expecting that once we are born again, the character of Christ should be found in us. After all, we said that we are children of God. But who do you look like? Nanya, your children say, Oh, you and your me badia, and your nurse said, Now, who's no who be? So when we are talking about an inheritance, we are talking about something. As a quality, characteristics, or other immaterial possession received from progenitors or predecessors as if by succession. So this third one puts the first and the second together. So then you have to do kind of any toss me in the boom. Near bet me I can say Japadia, a yeah, I did be a well bus you be more. Yeah, a family pride. So when we are saying inheritance, we are also talking about family pride. Sometimes there is some mark on a certain family. When you see them, they pride themselves in that you see this is a family pride. They know they go by certain traits. And all of us who are followers of Christ and children of Him should go by a certain trait. Now I commit you to God. And to the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up. And give you inheritance. Among all those who are sanctified. So inheritance here. Is both material and immaterial. Material and so we should therefore not allow the word of God to lie by because in it is our inheritance. See, it shouldn't lie unused because it will give us inheritance it can and it can build us up all that he has has become ours and all these are written in the scriptures now listen to Paul's prayer for the Ephesian church Ephesians chapter 1 18 through 23 but i'll read in parts i'll just read two verses from there ephesians 1 18 then i'll read 22 i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you have been called the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people glorious the inheritance is so glorious they are riches but it is hidden amongst his people you need to have the understanding to know what belongs to you. Smovo Paul, O bomb pie, Ediama, a sorry wife, you sonu. Now, Australian Uncle Ponce, Obe Bion Tiasi, and you are no one who and you are Japadia and war one. After talking about some of the inheritance, to the extent of talking about the fact that we are even above principalities and powers, this is how you concluded it, verse 22. O you are a dunumian, you say, and okay. And God plays all things. Under his, that is Christ's feet, and appointed him to be head over everything. And then the next word is F O R for. He doesn't need it for the church. He became all things for us. You know, Satan is a creation of God. Ah, if if God defeats Satan, what has God achieved? But he did that so that we will have authority over Satan. Amen. Amen. So the inheritance is for you. All for the church. And God place how many things? And God place how many things? 
under his feet. And appointed him to be the head over how many things? Everything. And this all things and everything he has given to us. See, inherent in the word of God is the transforming power of God. It can prepare us into greatness and give us that quality of life that only God can give. That quality of life that only God can give. And above all, transform us into the image of Christ from glory to glory. So we are not just talking about property. We are talking about character and genetic traits. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Ephesians 4 13. Until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So God is expecting that as part of the inheritance, there's something in us. We need to grow to become like Christ. Let me remind you of this verse. It's one of my favorites. So I keep coming back to it. Ephesians 4.24 Ephesians 4.24 And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So we have a new self that we must put on. It is created to be like God because we are children of God and that is part of the inheritance. Why is it so? Because God's seed dwells in us because we are his offspring. You see, when you are born again, you become a child of God. See, if, if that is true, then it means that his seed dwells in you. You see, when I see my children, nobody tells me that I, I see myself in them. <laughs> I see myself in them. I know how I walk, not because when I'm walking, I see myself walking. I see myself walking, but you cannot actually figure out how you walk. But when my big boy is walking, I know that he is walking like the father. <laughs> because my seed is in him. One of my boys, when he was great now, was very troubled. So he was always moving, causing trouble and jumping here and there. Oh. But I realized that my father liked him so much. Anytime he comes around, he will be jumping up and down with the boy. Sometimes you see my father trying to go under uh, <laughs> a sofa. I said, oh, what is this over my dream? And the boy will follow him. The one day he said, ah, we ordered the sofa. <laughs> He's the one to that I thought was disturbing the house. When you were like him, you were like this. And so from that day I repented. Papa Shem kum no se bra uti sabo frey no na se ana uti. If you sabre no, and I'm sacra magini. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Now, take this verse just as it is. Many times when you are reading commentaries about it, they turn to what I eat as if this is not true. But it is true. It is just as it is. 
One say you pen, no way you mu to me no. Now so fun said yet you know. First John three verse nine. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Yes. If we say su at nimu na on to me nya boni if we say on yankopon and I won't know. Then commentators will add, but you see, to a is human is not talking about perfect. Take this one, take it as it is. Anyone who is born of God will not continue in sin. Take it. This is the standard. And he said, because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning. The King James said they cannot sin. Because they have been born of God. Now, so when you sin, it is not because to err is human or you are weak. It means that what you did is a mistake because that is not who you are. So anything that is contrary to this is a mistake. That is why you correct it. But you don't continue to make the same mistakes because sin is missing the mark. Otherwise, the actual mark is to live in righteousness. Okay. Because when you are born again, you are born again. Go for this one. We soon said yet you know. Strive to be a child of God. And don't continue in sin. Men koso entina boni. Verse ten. Yeah, it was This is how we know who the children of God are. Just let me say yemu and when you come on emma and who the children of the devil are. And you are born some man so there should certainly be some dichotomy. Okay, when you emma ejina ha and says you are born some man so ejina ho. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Obiara onye di etine no. Nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Now, brothers, why are we saying that this word of God is able to build us holistically and then give us inheritance? Apart from what Jesus said, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by everywhere that proceeds. It means that in this life, it is not only bread alone, but the words that come out of the mouth of God is able to help you and then help you to live in this life. See, one of the products of the word of God is wisdom. It can make us wise. And it is this that will cause us to live in this life. I will read from 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. Because you know those from whom you learn it. Now, what ye? Tina de Westiano, Ara, well, who knew a free no cranium, wouldn't him only you qua, Westia a free in China. And now, from infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ. Now, if you move for a sin name to a crone crone. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Every good work means every good work. And anything you move yang na onyango pon ni pa aye pa we see see no kura amenu ma penina. But verse fifteen is a most suggestive verse. Na yimu do no mono e kan sembi atre wa. Verse fifteen again, please. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise. Now 
take note of that word. But it continues for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Na ufri umofrasi nimtre kron kronwa. See, the thought is that from his childhood, Timothy had known the sacred writings. Now taught by his mom and his grandmother. So from infancy, he had been under the influence of the word of God. And Paul is saying, under no circumstance should you forget that blessed book. Don't forget that blessed book that has molded your life for God and for good. As Mother Paul Air Country and say, Memo we didn't feed such a crunk ya a bow and you see you a brabum and your unquem. And the scriptures is spoken of in this particular verse 15 that. It is able to continually make people wise for all unto salvation. This means first of all that people learn the way of salvation through the Bible. Because in the scriptures or in the gospel, the righteousness of Christ is revealed. So this scripture may also carry the thought that through the scriptures we are assured of the salvation that comes through Christ. But beyond these spiritual benefits and many other spiritual benefits, the understanding of the scriptures makes one wise. Gives wisdom that liberates and this wisdom liberates and it saves. It says that it will make you wise unto salvation does not just mean it will make you wise to be uh, born again. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. It gives wisdom that liberates us. Liberation from poverty and want. God is not just interested in saving us. Us from sin and being born again. Now he's interested in our total well-being. He came that we might have life. And have it more much in the full. Abundant life. He came to give us life. And he gave us life in abundance. See, the prayer of the apostle John for his friend Gaius is written in 3 John 1, 1 and 2. Yeah, you honey, now bomb pie, a man down for guy, you know. Say, Anna, okay. The elder to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in truth, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. See, John is a human being. And he cannot give Gaius good health and prosperity. He cannot sustain his life. So he prays to the one who can. And who is also interested in what is the wish of this great apostle Paul. So God is concerned about our health. So in the scriptures, there is a principle of rest. Hmm. It's not only the Sabbath rest, but Jesus one day told the disciples, Come and rest. Okay. And your home, you can say, You would have home, 
See, the value of exercising is projected in scripture. That is how we say that this book, it saves us and holistically, it's not only about going to heaven. If you follow the principles, you will know better than your teacher. See, God is even interested in what we eat. And how much we eat. <laughs> how much we take into the extent that gluttony is spoken against in scripture. Even there's a principle of time to eat. For the sake of the word of wisdom and gluttony, I'll quote one scripture. Where these two words appear. Where appear. So, <laughs> so that, you see, once upon a time I was going out somewhere with my dick and I've been saying this. Then when I got there, they were late. I got to his house and he was about to eat. Debina mene uh some four bear mabako ye yeah co baby na me could do ni fear no na obedidi. So I decided to wait. Of course, if he's going to eat, I cannot just drag him. Then the wife brought the food. And I saw the bigness of the two fufu balls. So I said, ah, can you eat all? Oh? Then he said, Nyam Yanduma, I'm waiting. <laughs> By the I, grace of God, I can consume it. I said, ah, brother, if you start filling your tummy with this boss, the stomach will be opening like this. Soon, you have to swallow the whole of this lectern. See, so, yeah, me, eat kakra and kakra. And now, it sounds so bad, didn't you say, me train, and I'm going to hear it. Dear Diana, no, I buy, and I'm a chef of one to am, you know, now, it's Sia Brantian anymore. Now, my book, you. Not me dream quite a bit fast of the way I could go near him. And so, we was out and was saying, I'm yadum, which may be any in our come, come, come. Now, name me who is answer. So, wait to ask why one shot that I do a minute or so. And because we were late, I was worried. It's answer. Now, yeah, yeah, catch him to know. Now, I'm not having a pie. I'm just looking at the time he's going to spend and finish all this. And then he said, by God's grace, he can consume it. I'm so, praying so that when I'm going to visit people, do not run away when it is eating time. Oh. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners but the wisdom is proved right by her deeds wisdom is proved right by her deeds oni papa no bai odidi na onome na wo se hwe odidi fo ne osanom fo toje fo ne neboyen fo adam fo nanso Glutton. Wisdom. Nyansa. Is proved right by her deeds. The solution to gluttonness and drunkenness is this word wisdom. Wisdom is the manager of death and destruction. Nyansa to me, a bomb out to me, true, a free of war, and in your best, we shall all die. In your bed, but if you have wisdom, you can manage death. And so, so, when you're young, son, go back to your car, you can manage death, all things being equal, and destruction. Any or say, and so, obey to make Daniel free, who can manage it. But me, who know, God is interested in our finances and our work. Our businesses and how we conduct it. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. 
When you come home, to me a shramo. I'm a man and a moroso. So never you move to me a day. I want you And as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Asenia watchere ono wa piti wa japa di ni na edi ama afufro. Now listen to this one. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlighten the harvest of your righteousness. Okay, nia nia ma odidi fo aduane na oma okuafo aba ema nugu no. Ono so betumi ama mo ne hia mo nyina se nia nia hunyate e wo tene. So he's saying that God supplies seed to the sower. Trust him ne say oma ogufo aba. And then he also supplies bread for food. Okay, nia nia odidi no so oma aduane. Now listen. Tiha you don't have to eat the seed. So if he supplies you with capital, you don't consume the capital. It is for business. You eat the bread. You see, the two of us are all children of God. Brother, come close. God is always supplying a seed. But the seed is supposed to be planted against tomorrow. But he gives us our daily bread. Daily he gives us bread. So he has seed and have seed. Now, and then he supplies us daily bread. So we have bread for the day. Sometimes it may not be enough. But what will take you into the future and make you prosperous It's not the bread. It's not the miraculous bread. It is how the two of us manage our seed. So if you don't manage your seed well, as we go on, you realize that if he's doing his well, he will have advantage over me. Doesn't mean God does not love me, but you don't know how to plant and manage your seed. It is so shiny the end of year. A break on a bit me the year at time. It's answer was shiny the year about the man. So when you are able to manage your seed well, and then he also supplies your daily bread, look at verse 11. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us. Your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Not just what you miss, what banus we hear, but you mean what so does all. I'm a way, I'm a cry, I'm a brave. Now, I'm a way so at the Asada, I'm a ready. Are we together? See, the dignity of labor is taught and advocated in the word of God. See, I didn't need the M. Dumayan, when you're a son, church, and to the extent that Paul says that those who do not work. Please don't give them food. So man shall not live by bread alone. But by everywhere that proceeds as of the mouth of the Lord. Now I commit you to God. And to the word of his grace. Which can build you up. And give you inheritance. As long as you are working on your seed. It will give you inheritance. It will take you out of poverty. It will strengthen you and take you out of stress and sicknesses that comes by strain and When we apply ourselves to it, it can build us up. Body, soul, and spirit. Are we together? Now listen to this. 2 Corinthians 8-9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might be rich. Now, we are not in the least suggesting that the understanding of the word of God will take care of your tertiary education. Yeah. Yeah. And that it is a substitute for studying law or medicine or any other discipline. We are not saying that. We are not saying that. But you see, 
It will wise you up so that you will be able to manage the affairs of life. Now this what? is all that we are saying. See, many of our elders, at least some of the people that I know, they were not so sophisticated. When it comes to education, they don't have, but they are children. Because of the wisdom God gave them, they have been able to manage their home, and their children have attended schools that day never were able to attend. That is the wisdom. It comes from the word. And it wise you up and you manage your affairs. See, the understanding of the Holy Scriptures builds in one the fear of God. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It continually gives us the mind of Christ. When you are having the understanding of the word, you are actually receiving the mind of Christ on issues. And this is a superior mind. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2.16. 1 Corinthians 2.16. For who has known the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The law of the Lord is perfect. Refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. What that means is that making simple or foolish person wise. Now verse 11 says that, that is Psalm 19 verse 11. By them your servant is won. In keeping them there is great reward. In keeping the word of God, knowing it, understanding it, and acting upon it, the Bible says there is great reward. Great reward. It can build you up and give you inheritance through the wisdom it provides. Now, as I bring the curtains down on this, see, wisdom is the foundation upon which things are built. Now, you see, you don't build marriages on money and beauty and fame. You build marriages on wisdom. See, when you're a wise person, you build on a rock solid. And so then, by all means, the rains will come. Then they will come and test the foundation. But wisdom is the rock on which vocations, relations are built. Businesses. When you can have great money but to start a business, but when you don't have wisdom and you don't know the difference between seed and bread, your business will collapse. It will not just stand the test of time. Wisdom is the foundation upon which things are built. So build your vocation on wisdom. Your relationships on wisdom. And wisdom comes from the word of God. Proverbs 3 verse 19. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he sets the heavens in place. You see, God did this with wisdom. Now, he didn't create man before coming to ask, what is he going to drink? Proverbs 24 verse 3. 
By wisdom, a house is built, and through understanding, it is established. Verse 4. Now let's pay attention to verse 4. Through knowledge that comes from wisdom, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Mm -hmm. Now verse 5, the big one. The wise, the wise man prevails through great power. So wisdom is power. See, people think that <laughs> you have to match up. If you want to succeed, have be somebody who is wise. You prevail through great power. And those who have knowledge master their strength. Hmm. Wisdom. Wisdom is power. See, if the Bible and the word of God is from God, and it is God's breath, can you imagine the kind of wisdom that is in it? Okay. So when I see Christians who don't go to church and they don't read the Bible, and they're always talking about demons deliverance. We go and read. The Bible is not a good thing. One person in a one penny, a mere same king kind. The Bible is not a good thing. If you are a money, you are a name. Who is a king kind? Wisdom is a spirit with which we govern or lead well. See, if you want to lead well and govern well, we need wisdom. Now, when I'm young, I'm so. Proverbs 8 verse 1. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise a voice? So wisdom and understanding is always used interchangeably. So we are talking about the wisdom that God gives to us. It is calling us. So the whole of chapter 8 is about wisdom. And so let's go to verse 15 and 16. Okay. Now verse 15. By me, this me is not God. Because the whole subject there is about wisdom. So by me is by wisdom kings reign and rulers issue decrees that are just. Now trust him no air kasa after nyansan wano. Or say, me so and I him for nam edi hine. Now, sixteen. By me, that is wisdom, princes govern and nobles, all who rule on earth. By me, they should come to me and ask for wisdom so that they can rule well. Now, what cast off a young son we are on? Now, what children say, Miss So, and I'm penny for num, a deep penny. Now, I bring pong, and they as I say so at the Mufunian. I'm sure the young people will love this one. Did he say? Wisdom turns things around for the better. Hmm. Hmm. Solomon accumulated Second Chronicles one fifteen. Let's let me just read verse fifteen. But all around it is powerful. But just verse fifteen for the second time. The king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothill. Now, this he king, he made silver and gold as common as pebbles. How many of us want him to be our president? Yeah. Now, he is Solomon saying, "I trust him." No, I can't find him. In your mood, no, no. I say, "No, he is my great and sika." Yes, I bo. Jerusalem. Just because of the wisdom God gave. Now, now verse 17. Look at that. The best of horses you could find those days was in Egypt. Now look at what he's going to do. They imported a chariot from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. They also exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the Arameans. Now, <laughs> you see, or the Nyansa, or the Bobra. Now, look at business. You will go to Egypt, bring chariots and horses, and then he's now an exporter. 
ohwe eyi nu du enso na o se na wode ntiasi na ma ne bo ye yetebna ahensia ne aponkonso a ne bo ye oha edionum firimizrim ba na sa na wo kra bi e ma hetifo ahenfo nyina ani syria ahenfo enso let me conclude me by we. just giving a glimpse of the reward of wisdom mo me yenhwe aketua yetumi nya efri nyansem proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 to 18 ehwe me busem no etimi ensa efi nyimu dumi ensa no eko no something has come into my mind bibia ba ma dwunu sisi ya but wisdom tells me not to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I must say it. Now Proverbs 3 okay. verse 13. Now let's read together. Blessed are those who find wisdom. Those who gain understanding. So we are saying that wisdom and understanding are always used interchangeably. So when you find it, you are blessed. It's Edika. not money, but wisdom. Through the word or when God gives you. Edika, I can't tell you. 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 i can not tell you 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 for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. O kasa fa nyansa wono se na ni mu adinya ayese ne gete de na ne mfaso se ne sika amapa. Verse 15. Dunum no. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her wisdom. Na ne bo ye den ese ne mota. Na afefe die nyina won fa nto ho. Now, if you want to see wisdom on the streets, then pay attention to the masses. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Not just riches. Some people are rich, but they don't have honor. Because people know the way they make their monies. Hmm. But when you see proper wisdom, led by the Spirit of God, in his right hand is long life. And the other hand, two things, riches and anna. I trust him, we say we, and a fat nyansang. Or so nyinchre, a wo nyinifemu, na ni benkum kura adie, and ye nyunyam. I like the verse 17. Dun so no meni jeho pa. I'm sure the young men like verse 16, but I like the verse 17. Did he say, adie ndi? Now, her right ways okay. are pleasant ways. And all her paths are peace. Na kwenye na eyefe. 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 Na kwenye. church and we sing this song and we say all his ways are pleasant we don't have to say all his ways we should have said all her ways because this scripture is not referring to god it's referring to wisdom that we glean from scripture she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her those who hold her fast will be blessed Na oyem kwedua ema wo a wo so ni mu na nhira ene de okura ni mu now i commit you to god afi me de mo me share and to the word of his grace ene na dum ensem ni which can build you up i bet you me de mo see ho and give you inheritance na mo mo japade e among all those who are sanctified wo wa now I commit you to God. I commit you to God. I commit you to God. I commend you to God. And I commend the scriptures to you. Which can build you up. And give you inheritance. Among all those who are sanctified. When we found him. We grabbed him. Not knowing that inside him. Is wisdom. Mm, Colossians chapter 2. Verse 3. Now let's read 2 
verse 2 so that it makes some meaning. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of the complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. So he's talking about knowing Christ. But I say, Obey to me, and Yan Dinina Munumu, or Namsa, in Cransham, and Dima Winners, and Nemo, but I didn't say, Obey Hun Christo ye. And he describes Christ as the mystery of God. Now, what's your Christo Munia? What's your name? Or no, a year, or Yankupo, and that means that there are so many things in this. Now, what's your name? Say, Wunyamimuno, and it doesn't be now the big one, verse three. Cassiano Pa in ye. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The mu. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It is not compatible to be a Christian fool. No, no, no. Because in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And, and he is the word. I commit you to God. And to the word of his grace. Which can build you up. And give you inheritance. Among all those who are sanctified. God bless you.